Miss Honey. Matilda was a little late in starting school. Most children begin primary school at five or even just before, but Matilda's parents, who weren't very concerned one way or the other about their daughter's education, had forgotten to make the proper arrangements in advance. She was five and a half when she entered school for the first time. The village school for younger children was a bleak brick building called Cruncham Hall Primary School. It had about 250 pupils aged from five to just under 12 years old. The head teacher, the boss, the supreme commander of this establishment, was a formidable middle-aged lady whose name was Miss Trunchbull. Naturally, Matilda was put in the bottom class, where there were 18 other small boys and girls about the same age as her. Their teacher was called Miss Honey, and she could not have been more than 23 or 24. She had a lovely pale oval Madonna face with blue eyes and her hair was light brown. Her body was so slim and fragile, one got the feeling that if she fell over, she would smash into a thousand pieces like a porcelain figure. Miss Jennifer Honey was a mild and quiet person who never raised her voice and was seldom seen to smile, but there is no doubt she possessed that rare gift for being adored by every small child under her care. She seemed to understand totally the bewilderment and fear that so often overwhelms young children who for the first time in their lives are herded into a classroom and told to obey orders. Some curious warmth that was almost tangible shone out of Miss Honey's face when she spoke to a confused and homesick newcomer to the class. Miss Trunchbull, the headmistress, was something else altogether. She was a gigantic holy terror, a fierce, tyrannical monster who frightened the life out of the pupils and teachers alike. There was an aura of menace about her, even at a distance, and when she came up close, you could almost feel the dangerous heat radiating from her, as from a red-hot rod of metal. When she marched, Miss Trunchbull never walked. She always marched, like a stormtrooper, with long strides and arms a-swinging. When she marched along a corridor, you could actually hear her snorting as she went. And if a group of children happened to be in her path, she ploughed right on through them like a tank, with small people bouncing off her to left and right. Thank goodness we don't meet many people like her in this world, although they do exist, and all of us are likely to come across at least one of them in a lifetime. If you ever do, you should behave as you would if you met an enraged rhinoceros out in the bush. Climb up the nearest tree and stay there until it has gone away. This woman, in all her eccentricities and in her appearance, is almost impossible to describe, but I shall make some attempt to do so a little later on. Let us leave her for the moment and go back to Matilda and her first day in Miss Honey's class. After the usual business of going through all the names of the children, Miss Honey handed out a brand new exercise book to each pupil. You have all brought your own pencils, I hope, she said. Yes, Miss Honey, they chanted. Good. Now this is the very first day of school for each one of you. It is the beginning of at least eleven long years of schooling that all of you are going to have to go through, and six of those years will be spent right here at Cruncham Hall, where, as you know, your headmistress is Miss Trunchbull. Let me, for your own good, tell you something about Miss Trunchbull. She insists upon strict discipline throughout the school, and if you take my advice, 
you will do your very best to behave yourselves in her presence. Never argue with her. Never answer her back. Always do as she says. If you get on the wrong side of Miss Trunchbull, she can liquidise you like a carrot in a kitchen blender. It's nothing to laugh about, Lavender. Take that grin off your face. All of you will be wise to remember that Miss Trunchbull deals very, very severely with anyone who gets out of line in this school. Have you got the message? Yes, Miss Honey, chirruped eighteen eager little voices. I myself, Miss Honey went on, want to help you to learn as much as possible while you are in this class. That is because I know it will make things easier for you later on. For example, by the end of this week, I shall expect every one of you to know the two times table by heart. And in a year's time, I hope you will know all the multiplication tables up to twelve. It will help you enormously if you do. Now then, do any of you happen to have learnt the two times table already? Matilda put up her hand. She was the only one. Miss Honey looked carefully at the tiny girl with dark hair and a round, serious face sitting in the second row. Wonderful, she said. Please stand up and recite as much of it as you can. Matilda stood up and began to say the two times table. When she got to twice twelve is twenty-four, she didn't stop. She went right on with twice thirteen is twenty-six, twice fourteen is twenty-eight, twice fifteen is thirty, twice sixteen is... Stop, Miss Honey said. She had been listening slightly spellbound to this smooth recital, and now she said, How far can you go? How far? Matilda said. Well, I don't really know, Miss Honey. For quite a long way, I think. Miss Honey took a few moments to let this curious statement sink in. You mean, she said, that you could tell me what two times twenty-eight is? Yes, Miss Honey. What is it? Fifty-six, Miss Honey. What about something much harder, like... Two times four hundred and eighty-seven. Could you tell me that? I think so, yes, Matilda said. Are you sure? Why, yes, Miss Honey, I'm fairly sure. What is it, then? Two times four hundred and eighty-seven. Nine hundred and seventy-four, Matilda said immediately. She spoke quietly and politely, and without any sign of showing off.